This isn't the first time David Rhodes' reporting put him in harm's way. Fourteen years ago in Bosnia, he was arrested by Serbian troops. After Rhodes broke the story of the massacre of Bosnian Muslims at Srebrenica, he sneaked back into the country. The Serbs thought Rhodes was a spy when they saw him taking pictures of other graves. Well, for five days, we didn't know if he was alive or dead. And then when he came out later, we discovered that the Serbs had been driving all over Yugoslavia trying to find a place to develop the slides. Rode won a Pulitzer Prize for his reporting of Srebrenica. He won a second Pulitzer a month ago for his part in the New York Times coverage of Afghanistan and Pakistan. Rode was researching a book on the U.S. involvement there when the Taliban offered him an interview. Instead, they kidnapped him and his translator. Rode was abducted outside Kabul and held for seven months in the mountainous Pakistani region of Waziristan. The kidnappers would let him call to, to sort of demonstrate that he was still alive. And from that, we know that they were mostly in the mountains, that they were moved frequently. Yesterday, Rhodes somehow managed to climb over a wall. He hailed a Pakistani scout who took him to an army base. From there, Rhodes was airlifted to the U.S. Air Base at Bagram, Afghanistan. And that's at this moment where he is. I, I hope catching up on some sleep, getting a physical... Um, chatting with his wife on the phone. Road was lucky. Since 9-11, 32 journalists have been killed in Afghanistan and Pakistan. This is probably the most dangerous period in history for journalists. In Iraq alone, we've counted 139 journalists who's, who have been killed. David's family says they prayed for him every day, and they are enormously relieved that he is safe. None more than his wife, Kristen. We've been married nine months, she says, and David's been in captivity for seven of them. Tony Guidas, CBS News, New York.